Hello there, my name is Ellen Brooks White and I am an American essayist and literary stylist. I use the name Evie White in my professional life. I've written several poems, essays, and novels. My most famous works, however, are Charlotte's Web and Stuart Little. To begin, I'd like to tell you a little more about myself. I was born on July 11, 1899 in Mount Vernon, New York. I was the son of Samuel and Jesse White, who cared deeply for me and my older siblings. My father was a piano manufacturer, and although we were not wealthy, we were comfortably well off. As a child, I attended public schools in Mount Vernon. I casually found myself writing short stories here and there, but I was so young I never really thought of making writing a career. Before attending university, I served in the Army during World War I. After this, I went to Cornell University and graduated in 1921 at the age of 22. While at Cornell, I worked as the editor of the Cornell Daily Sun. It was right then and there that I knew that I wanted to be a writer. I was a busy writer long before I went to long pants. <laughs> I always found writing difficult and bad for one's disposition. But I kept at it. I was offered a teaching position at the University of Minnesota. But I turned that down because I was determined to achieve my goal as a writer. After graduating from Cornell, I worked at various jobs. I worked as a reporter for the United Press International and the American Legion News Service in 1921 and 1922. During 1922 and 1923, I worked as a reporter for the Seattle Times. I then came to the conclusion that I was not fit for daily journalism, I need something else, so I decided to try something new. I returned to New York in 1924 where I worked for two years at an advertising agency as a production assistant and advertising copywriter. During this time I had several poems published in a newspaper column helped me achieve some prominence and fame. For 11 years I wrote for the magazine editorial essays and contributed verses and other pieces to the New Yorker. There I met Catherine Surgeon Angel, the magazine's literary editor and the woman I would marry in the future. In 1925 I published the article The Sense of the Bronx River in the New Yorker magazine. My first piece in that publication. This led to me being named a contributing editor in 1927 and so forth. From the time of its origin, the New Yorker was one of the most prestigious periodicals in the nation. It featured such celebrities as Alexander Wolcott, Dorothy Parker, Robert Benchley, and George S. Kaufman as contributors, so I was in the company of the best when I was added to the staff. In 1929, I married my Catherine, and together we have one son. I worked for the New Yorker's Weekly Magazine, remaining in its staff for the remainder of my career. My favorite subjects were the complexities of modern society, the failures of technological progress, the pleasures of urban and rural life, war, and internationalism. I was skeptical about organized religion and I advocated a respect for nature and simple living. In 1938, my wife and I gave up our apartment in New York and moved permanently to North Brooklyn, Maine. We currently reside in our little farmhouse with many farm animals, some of which have even made their ways into my stories. My wife finds pleasure in her gardening and I have continued to write as I always have. In 1945, I entered a new field with great success, writing Stuart Little for children. The story of a mouse born to normal human parents was intended to console young people who thought themselves different or odd, and it carried the message that Stuart's parents never batted an eye when their son turned out to be a mouse, and that the hero could build himself a good life. In 1952, I wrote my most popular children's book, Charlotte's Web. The story of the bond between the young pig Wilbur and the clever spider who saves his life is about the power of friendship and a reminder to young readers that death is a part of life. Thank you for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed my stories as much as I have.